Rivera says he stays hurt. I, I know that, man. He does. Triple M in the building. Salute Triple M. Says Brogdon's my number one target. Yeah. that That's it for me, man. Reliable. Somebody you can trust if he's healthy to go get. Now, Jake Fisher, Yahoo Sports. Uh, or I'm sorry, Mark Stein, however, was saying that, you know, it's not clear on, on whether or not the uh, the Blazers even want to trade Brogdon. Are they trying to up their price? I don't see the purpose of keeping Brogdon. They have a team option on them for next season. Would they really pick that up? For the Knicks, that team option is attractive because you keep that money where if you want to trade him in the offseason, you could do that and keep that salary. Mike Marrero, I see you, Mike. Let's go. Salute, Mike. Matthew Sussman says, uh, too injury prone. Okay, I get that. Too injury prone. Uh, Zach Nitsche, Brockton would be ideal. So to Zach Nitsche in the chat. So that's that's number one. I feel like he's he's gettable now that the, the clutch sports and CAA rift, the truce is it has been it has been made. Leon Rose and World Wide West went out to dinner. They patched things up, squashed the beef. Malcolm Brogdon, a clutch sports client, does that open the door for Brogdon? So I think for me, that's number one in terms of who I like and to me, a realistic get. Number two, you guys know I'm going with, man. My guy, Alec Burks. Get money, Burks. Detroit Pistons. What does Troy Weaver want? James Edwards, who covers the Pistons for The Athletic, thinks that, you know, Detroit could want two twos for Burks. Obviously, you got to get some salary in there. But the reason I, I, the, the reason I, I say Burks, number two, and also in terms of a realistic target is he's been here before. What is What do the Knicks do all the time? They bring in guys who have been here before. Look how many times they bring in Taj Gibson. If once a Nick, always a Nick was a person, he'd be Taj Gibson. I think Burke should be a target. He's been here before. He knows Tips' system. Plug and play. Can come in here and take over right away for that bench unit. 12-2 and two on the season. Now his field goal percentage is garbage. <laughs> 38%. Come on, my guy, A.B. I'm calling you get buckets. Got to do better than that. But he's shooting 38.5% from three. You know that's his specialty. You, you know that's his specialty. So that's that. Cam in the chat says A.B. to guard. Level says Burks in his role is definitely an A+. Plus. Triple M, who's starting under, under Tibbs, Burks or Brunson. It won't break the bank, right? Jim, for it, it won't break the bank. It won't break the bank. We got we got to be realistic, guys. Like we got to be realistic. Let let's put away the thought that the trade deadline is just going to bring about some block but another blockbuster trade from there. I don't see it. I just don't see it. You've heard Woj go on ESPN saying they're looking towards the summer. You guys know who I think they're going to go after. I think this is going to be another Small bench upgrade like what they do at the deadline every year. Shore up the bench. So I think I think Burks is realistic. Number three on my list, I'm going with Jordan Clarkson. Utah Jazz. Some of you guys like him. I, I You know, look, I think he's an erratic player. He's a chuck at times. But at this stage in the game, you're looking for some offense. You got to make up offense. 17 and three, 17 and five, shooting 41 percent from the field is Jordan Clarkson. Had a good game uh, the other night when they uh, they came back. A 40 a 40 point fourth quarter on the Bucks was killing Giannis and them man. That's Jordan Clarkson. What do you guys think, man? What do you guys think about Jordan Clarkson? Not so high on him. I'm putting him third on my list because I also don't think that the Knicks are going to go after him. Not so sure they want to be dealing with Danny Ainge. NR, NRYK95 says he's a bucket. We need that. Gives you a minimum 15 points. He gets buckets. <laughs> right level. I don't know if he can handle Tibbs' defense. If he ain't playing defense, <laughs> he's coming out the game, man. American one, yeah, he looked crazy when he played us. 
He was taking terrible shots, but that's that's Clarkson's game. You know, he, he he's a wild player, man. Stack says no thank you on Jordan Clarkson. So that's why I'm I'm putting him third. I'm putting Clarkson third on the list. I just uh, I just don't see it. What do you guys think, man? So to everybody in the chat once again, make sure you guys are sharing this video, man, on the on the uh, Bleach Report app. Share it out there. Let them know CP the franchise is rocking on this lunchtime affair on Bleacher Report. Who else we got in here, man? All my KFTV day ones, all my KFTV soldiers in here. Salute. Throw number one in the chat. And for you guys that are new, man, welcome, man. You know, you know where to find us, man. YouTube.com slash Knicks Fan TV, number one show for the fans by the fans. But also enjoying these collaborations on Bleacher Report. Bank says he's a microwave player. Yeah, that's that's who Clarkson is. Would I be mad at it? No, because at this point, I really think this team, they, they need help, man. They need help. And I want to see them in there competing in the playoffs. They have a chance. I think they have a chance, if all goes right, to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Philly's going to come back to the pack. They don't even know when Embiid's coming back. That don't sound great. You got the Bucks still trying to figure themselves out. Yeah, the Bucks have beat us four out of five so far. So you, you, can't, you can't get too low on them. But. They're vulnerable. I think they are vulnerable, especially defensively. The Knicks can get, you know, step their offense up. I think they can see the Bucs, especially you put OG out there, healthy OG out there, to shore up the defense. That changes things. So I say that to say, uh, go get a bench upgrade. You know what, Zach Nitschie? I think Monte Morris, I, I've been saying Monte Morris has been a, a wild card for me. The bad thing is, is that he's just now starting to play. So it's not really clear. Like, I believe it was a quad injury he was out for. He was out with. Monte Morris would have would have been a good pickup had he been healthy this year. He's just now trying to get back into the swing of things. A couple of games back, you know, nine and two, eight and two. So he, he's, just, he's only played six games so far this year. But I believe when I was looking at his contract that he's only at like $9 million. I mean, it'd, it'd probably be a cheap deal. Problem is, you just don't know what the hell uh, uh, Troy Weaver and those guys want to do. So I, I think that is a wild card. Another wild card you guys like is, is Kyle Lowry, right? I think he's washed. I, I, I just think he's washed. Now, if you're just looking for somebody for insurance, sure. If you can get him on the buyout market on the cheap, fine. But I'm not looking at Cal Lowry to, like, really help us here. I'm, I, I, I don't have any expectation there. Sorry, I think he's washed. I think he's cooked. However, Mark Stein did report that. He didn't report the Knicks. He said the Sixers, the Lakers, and the Magic would be interested in one Kyle Lowry. Jay Lopez says no. Yeah, I th- I think he's cooked. You know, I, I I you know I know you guys like the Villanova reunion. You know how these guys go out there. Nah, not Kyle Lowry. <clears throat> not Kyle. Lowry. Not for me. Not for me. Now number four on my list. I'm putting Dejounte Murray at four. Dejounte Murray, I'm putting at four because I just think it's the least likely of the four names I gave you: Brogdon, Burks, Clarkson. I'm putting Murray at fourth. I just don't think the Knicks are that interested. He's got three more years left on his deal at Northwards of, 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 I believe, $25 million. We can take a look at it. Salute to everybody in the chat. I don't, I don't think they're that high on him, man. What do you guys think? I know a lot of you guys like this guy. And again, based on where the Knicks are, I wouldn't mind it. But if you tell me that the Hawks want two first-round picks for him, I don't think the Knicks go for it. And I know, yeah, like the contract, is, it's its not a bad contract. I'm just saying in terms of length. It's not bad in terms of annual, but in terms of length. However, what we have heard from multiple Knicks insiders on the beat, whether it's Fred Katz or, or, uh, or, or Bondi, is that the Knicks are looking for someone with a couple of years on their contract so that if they were looking for contracts to, to trade in aggregate, they could have that. So maybe. You know, maybe, but I'm I'm just uh, 
I, I just don't get the, the feeling that they're, they're too high on DeJounte Murray. Triple M says we need to keep shooting in the lineup. Freck Sinatra, he would kill. DeJounte would be legit. Picks and Grimes for Murray. Give him two picks and Quentin Grimes for Murray. Would he accept the third option role? Right. He went from being the number one guy to being 1B to Trey, where it's not working out. Now you're going to be 1C to Brunson and ultimately Julius. Tricky. B. Davis says if he doesn't work, good trade asset. That's that's what I thought as well. Is like, you know, long term. Because it, but here's here's the thing, long term, right? Let, let's just say this: you have him there for three years. You got to pay OG. You got to pay Jalen. You don't know what you're gonna do with Julius. You may play. You may pay him, or you may trade him for another piece that's gonna be making maybe equal or more. That's why the DeJounte pickup is tricky for me because it's like, what if they can't flip the asset for something better? Is is there no guarantees? Is is that the team that you're going to be looking to go to war with? Because you're pretty much going to be capped out. J.P. Martin, would, would DeJounte be cool with being used as trade fodder? You know, one of the things when we talked to Stephen Bondi of the New York Post, about the about the clutch and CAA situation, he talked about you know different players who have been represented by both, and and the nature of those relationships having impact straining the relationship between CAA and clutch. Whether it was Cam Reddish, uh, Mitchell Robinson had fired clutch. You had the Nerlens Noel situation. I mean, that's a fair point. It's a fair point. Brooklyn Saints says you have to pay Hartenstein. He will be in big demand. Something's going to shake out between those two centers. You're not going to have a lot of money parked paying Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hartenstein. Not with the new salary cap rules and the guys that you have to pay going forward. Everybody's not going to be able to get paid. Somebody's going to get sacrificed again. It's going to happen. It's just going to happen. All right, so, so those are the playmaking guards. So to everybody in the chat. Now, let's get to the front court depth. Number one on my list, you know, because the, the, the Randall injury is tricky. Uh, you, the report's coming out saying that two to three weeks, and then they're going to reevaluate things. I don't think that's a guarantee. I don't, I don't read that as Julius Randall's coming back in two to three weeks. Some of you might. I don't read it as that. I read it as they're going to reevaluate him in two to three weeks, meaning like, is he healing well? Well, Does he still need surgery? Is there a timetable for him to come back? They don't have a timetable for him right now. You know what I mean? So I say that to say you're going to need some front court depth. I think they need a period, a legit power forward. A legit power forward or 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 four or five hybrid. I think they do need depth. You don't know what's gonna happen with Hartenstein going forward, durability wise, or even in the offseason as a free agent. So number one on my list. PJ Washington. I'm gonna look at PJ Washington. According to Jake Fisher. Of Yahoo Sports. Let's pull this one up. Jake Fisher says that uh, the Knicks have shown legitimate interest in one PJ Washington. What do, what, do we, what do we think about that? The Knicks have shown legitimate interest there. And with Charlotte, I mean, they don't know what the hell is going on. They don't know which end is up. They could be a fire cell continuing here. So. I put P.J. Washington number one because I think he could be the most gettable. He has two more years left on his deal worth $15 million a year. Another trade, another salary that you could use in future deals. I believe he is CAA as well. Let me let me double check that. Is P.J. Washington part of the CAA mafia? 
Google. Let's see. Doing some research here. So, salute to everybody in the Bleacher Report chat. Is he part of CAA? But that's not important. The, the thing is here is that I think the Knicks need to look for some depth because you just don't know what uh, what shape Julius Randle is going to be in when he comes back. And I think even when he does come back, they could use some depth in the front court. You don't want to put all that pressure on him. So P.J. Washington is number one. Number two, Kelly Olynyk. You know that's my guy, Kelly. Kelly Olynyk, man. Can play the four, can play the five. Can shoot the three. Good playmaker, kind of like a Hartenstein. He's a scrapper. You know, defense isn't all that great. But he's a scrapper, man. Uh, I like Olenek. And according to Jake Brown, so do the Knicks. Uh, 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 According to Jake Fisher, sorry. So do the Knicks. Let's pull this article up. He says, uh, the Knicks still have on their radar Kelly Olenek and Jordan Clarkson. So could that be an option? Dan, the man says, I ain't trading someone swindled by Brittany. <laughs> Listen, man, what does that have to do with this game on the court? <laughs> Don't worry about that Brittany Renner situation. Is he balling or not? Can he get the job done on the court? Uh, M. Clark, are we giving up four first for McCall? I feel like that's reasonable. Hey, I would love to, man. Deshaun Marks might have other plans. So I got Kelly Olynyk at two in terms of my interest and what I think is like is in terms of likely. Number three, I got Bruce Brown. Now, Jake Fisher's report says that the Knicks are uh, more interested in Bruce Brown for whom the Raptors are seeking some return in the range of a first-round pick compared to Atlanta's steeper asking price of two first-round picks for DeJounte Murray. That ain't it for me. Level says, boo, not Bruce Brown. Yeah, I'm with Level, man. Uh, I Like, this is not the team for Bruce Brown to be impactful. We already had Bruce Brown and Josh Hart. That's not that's not it. You know, the Bruce Brown that played so well in the NBA finals, that was a key piece of the Nuggets championship team. This is a different team. This is a different team. He's he's not going to have that type of impact. He's not a bad player, but we already have that. We already have that here. To me, that'd be a redundant piece. And if they're really after Bruce Brown, the thing about Bruce Brown, he's a free agent. He's a, he's got a he's not a free agent. I mean, he's, he's got a team option on his deal. Remember, Indiana signed him to a major deal. So let's pull up the Bruce Brown contract real real quick. Contract don't even matter. I don't I don't even think that this is a bad move. I think it's this is a bad move. But let's pull it up either way. All right, so Bruce Brown is at uh, 22 this year and then a, then a team option at 23. So you're going to give up a, a first-round pick for Bruce Brown and then what, pick up pick up the option and trade him? Trade him, you know. Possible, but I mean, in in the scope of this year, I just don't see the need. <clears throat> what do you guys think? Jamaican says, we don't need that. Yeah. That's it. Uh, Joey Joey says, uh, who's my number one on the front court list? I put P.J. Washington. These are just realistic candidates of the names that we hear out there. And so that's what I'm putting on my list. It's hard. I mean, it's hard to get a lot of front court guys. I mean, and according to Jake Fisher, the Clippers have shown some interest in PJ Washington as well. So a lot of teams are looking at the Charlotte Hornets to potentially have a fire sale 
and give up some assets. You're hearing Gordon Hayward's name as well. Now, would I trade for Gordon Hayward? Absolutely not. He's, he's due $31 million this year plus a trade kicker. So there's no way in hell I'm trading for Gordon Hayward. Now, if he's a buyout market candidate, I would look at that as well. Sean Speller says we need a score. Absolutely. Any surprise picks I would go for? It's hard to say, man. It, it, it's hard to say um, without really knowing who's available. You know, I talked about Monte Morris for a little bit, but I don't see that as realistic just because he's come back from the injury. And Detroit is uh, its hard to gauge. Dark horse, I say, I think Brogdon more realistic. My dark horse is Burks. Boyan Bogdanovich is the answer. That's Taurus 39. Finney Smith, I don't think the Nets would trade uh, trade as Finney Smith. I would take him on this team, though. But the fourth on my front court depth, on my front court depth in terms of wants and needs, I had number one, P.J. Washington, number two, Kelly Olenek, <clears throat> number three, Bruce Brown. Number four, I put Capella's name on there. Put Clint Capella on there. Talking to Stephen Bondi of the uh, of the New York Post yesterday, that was his sleeper pick. And it's a name that you heard being put out there since the trade deadline, you know, all the rumors started. Clint Capella. Got Mitchell Robinson hurt. What's going on with Isaiah Hartenstein in the offseason? Will he walk? He's a free agent. It's another contract that you can keep and potentially trade because Clint Capella has two years left on his deal. So now you're talking about an expiring contract. So I put it number four in terms of least likely, but certainly plausible. What do you guys think? I think I think that's plausible. Capella 11 and 10. 57% from the field. How many blocks is he averaging this year? What's he at this year? He's not the same player that he used to be. 1.5 blocks. Not the same player that he was. Still only 29, though. Boogie down Bronx. Clint Capella will be fire. John Talento, I'm not giving up a lot for Capella. Yeah, you know, I, look, I don't, I don't think <clears> – <throat> one thing's for sure. I don't think that uh, that the Knicks will be desperate here at the deadline, no matter what happens with uh, with Julius or, or or OG. I don't think they'll be desperate. They never have been at the trade deadline. I don't, I don't think this is the year two. Like all these names I gave you, these are all role players. Do they swing the Knicks' chances at getting past the Eastern Conference Finals? I don't necessarily think so, but they will. Well, they will help. G G M F G M F or only if the price is right. Yeah, absolutely. Only if the price is right. So that is my list, man. Trade deadline is on Thursday. So just to give you guys a, a, a quick rundown uh, tonight on Knicks fan TV, come through, man. Knicks versus Grizzlies post game show. We'll get uh, highlights, reactions, caller reactions, your reactions to the, to the game. So make sure you tap in at about 10 p.m. Eastern time. On Thursday, we will be having a trade deadline special, man. You can join us on Knicks Fan TV at uh, 3 p.m. We'll recap, react to everything that goes down. And then Friday, I'll be back here on the Bleacher Report app. I believe that is at uh, 2.30 p.m. No, sorry, 12.30 p.m. on Friday to recap on the Bleacher Report app, man. So make sure that you guys tap in. I'll let you guys get back to your day, man. What do you guys think? What are your wants and needs for the Knicks at the trade deadline? Hit me up at Knicks Fan TV on all social media platforms or at CP the Franchise. No R. They're going to put some respect on the name. No R. CP the Franchise on all social platforms. All right. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you guys next time. CP the Franchise. We out of here. Peace. (laughs) 